when I was uh, in Lisbon, Portugal, I met a lady and she asked me how Ethiopia is going with a drought. And you may also link Ethiopia with a drought. I'm here to share you the side of Ethiopia you may not know. Ethiopia is a big country. It has a diverse topography, diverse agroecology, and uh, we have a green landscape also. And also we have uh, minerals, rich in minerals, uh, natural resource, and genetic diversity. Ethiopia is the origin of coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> and mankind. You can find Lucy and Salam. I'm from Ethiopia. I'm proud to be. And I'm Mahalet Dawit, born in Gute, East Wallega, Ethiopia. My parents valued education and they were my supporters. And my elder sister, she took a responsibility to tutor me after a school. It was this time I developed a passion to be a writer and a teacher. I even wrote a poem during my lower grade and telling my friends, I'm a writer and also I'm a teacher. And uh, I took a national examination to, to, to join university. And soon after I took a national examination, I became very sick and became on bed for almost three months. And I heard that I passed the national examination and I have to fill the form to select the faculty and the university. But which, which I, I couldn't make it. I couldn't go there and I couldn't make it. I couldn't talk and I couldn't write. And my friends did it to me and they select agriculture and Hausa University <laughs> as a first choice for me. I was needed to, to study a computer science. I was hoping that I became healed and joined the university. By the help of God, I managed to go to Hausa University to study my degree. And uh, I remember the speech of the president of Hawassa University, which was uh, Professor Zinabu. And he told us, if you couldn't get what you wanted, you have to accept and love what you get. Bingo. <laughs> it was a life-changing word for me. And through time, I started to love my field of study. And I graduated from, uh, by BSc, and then I pursued my MSc in animal breeding and genetics by the help of Swedish government scholarship. After my MSc graduation, there was a plenty of opportunity to join, but I was needed to join uh, academia, so I decided to go to university. And uh, I joined Dilla University, Asosa University, then go to Haramea University. I teach several courses at Haramea University, animal breeding and genetics, biometry, conservation genetics, biotechnology, and genetics. And also, I am engaged in community service, especially honey production and beekeeping. I was also working as a head of animal breeding and genetics laboratory at Haramea University. <laughs> the little of Mahalet, she was dream of to be a writer, and now she wants to, to, to write a research, to dive in the community, to collaborate with the community. So I started to write a research proposal for a grant. It was my first time to submit a proposal. It was for the African Resilient Network. 
and uh, African Horn of uh, Resilient Innovation Lab. It was uh, the innovational call for the livestock feed conservation. So uh, I send my application to them. I select, I pass two, two states. The project was having three states. And I successfully passed the pitching, co-creation, but I couldn't make to the third level. I again go for the writing and I got internal grant. I was happy and I was very excited uh, to work on the adapted livestock breeds. And uh, what I do here, I just finish the preparation for data collection, uh, the financing, everything, and uh, we decided to go with one of my team. The study area was, it took us three days from Harama University. Then we started our journey, and uh, first day, and second day, in the morning, I heard unexpectedly my friend abandoned me. And I don't know the study area deeply, but I know the place. And I called to my friend, and I told him what happened. And he told me to return to Haramea, and that uh, we arrange another one, then we go together. I just sat down and cried a lot, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and yeah, then after that, I decided and told to myself, because I have to go, I have to do myself. So uh, I go to the field, thank God. I got people who supported me for the data collection. I successfully managed to go to the community and collect, collect the data. And I returned to the university. Also, uh, I managed to produce a paper from that project and presented on international conference in Ethiopia. It was this time I met a scientist from International Livestock Research Institute. He approached me and he told me that the work was very novel and it was good. He really loved it and he just wanted to work with me. I was happy and we discussed together and I told him that I am planning to pursue my PhD and uh, he asked me to go to office and discuss about it. Later I go to the Addis Ababa International Livestock Research Institute to talk with him and he directed me with uh, scientists to share my idea with them and they reviewed my proposal and they grant me for my PhD research. <laughs> and at this time, I was living at Haramea, and uh, I have to pursue my PhD at Addis Ababa, so I have to move with my family, with my kids. I'm a mother of daughter and a twins. They were kids. And it was challenging to pursue with them, but I got a support from my family, especially my mother, my mother-in-law, and sisters. So by the help of people around me, I managed to work my PhD, and by the help of God this year, I'm going to graduate. I benefited from One Planet Fellowship in all aspects, in personal development, in my career, and also the visibility. I can connect regionally, nationally, and internationally. And also the courses I got about climate and uh, gender interaction helps me to, to do my research work in the, my PhD because it was the component of my PhD work. I was looking at the difference of adaptation in higher and lowland areas of livestock species. 
My research is focused on livestock genomics to understand how livestock respond to, to rainfall, to humidity, and uh, to the, the temperature. And also, I am working on metagenomics to understand the microbiomes. So I'm really grateful to have uh, this opportunity. And also, I can say that we are living in one planet. Whether we are from Africa, from Europe, or from Asia, we are facing the challenge of climate change in different ways. So let's put hands together, defeat the challenge we are having 